Hi guys and welcome to this Outlook calendar overview. Uh, this is going to be a short segmented videos uh, that will take you through the Outlook calendar and how to work with it, working with customizing views, um, setting up appointments, meetings, uh, and all of that. So moving forward, we're just going to work with arranging your calendar and how to set uh, how you're viewing your work week or your month. So as you can see, I'm in the home tab here and then we're in this arrange section now. I have it set up for my current day so as you can see I'm just um, on today's date and what I have going on for this day. You can also change that to work week, which will give you your five day overview, your week, which will be your seven day, and your month, which will give you the full month view. You also have this one called schedule view, um, which will show you your times that you have meeting schedule that has it barred out in a nice um, organized fashion. So that's really it for the arrange section, very simple. Um, so let's move on forward to the next video. All right, so in this section, we're just gonna get into a little bit more of the customization side of things with Outlook Calendar. So to do that, you're gonna go up to the tab section and click on view. Um, just with, with the last section, you can see that you have different arrangement options with the day, the week, and the month. Um, but from here, we're going to get into the color. So if you wanna change the color of your calendar, this is the place to do it. Right now, you can see that I'm automatically set to this green. Let's say I wanna change it to orange and that'll change your whole calendar. The next thing that we're gonna get into is the layout side of things. So right now you can see that I have um, five active tasks at the bottom of my calendar along with zero completed. So you have a couple options. You can either view those tasks by clicking here. As you can see, it's minimized right now, which means that it's that tiny bottom bar where it's just showing me how many tasks I have. If I make it normal, it's going to amplify that bar and show me all the tasks that I have in detail. And if I want to minimize that, once again, I can go back and click minimize, or I can just click this arrow at the bottom here um, to show task on due date and whatnot. As also, I wanted to point out, um, it's nice when you view tasks in the week because it shows you the day that they're on. So you can see that I have three due on Monday, one due on Tuesday, and one due on Friday. So we can close that out down here now. Let's click back on the calendar. Uh, let's go back to the view section. Um, you can also change your folder pane, which is this guy on the left side. Um, right now he's normal, you can minimize it, so it just has um, your basic options there. Uh, but you can pull it out with this button here and then uh, pin it back on if you'd like to keep it there. So um, you also have the to-do bar, which you can select of if you have certain meetings that you want to stay on top of, uh, if there's someone that you have to email, if there's a person you want to talk to or task completed. Once again, it just pulls it up on the right-hand side to give you a more overview of what's going on for your week. Um, now from here, also you have the reminders window, which is going to tell you uh, when you have a meeting or something is upcoming. So if I click on this reminder, you can see that uh, I had an advertising walkthrough that is an hour overdue. So if you forget about a meeting, that's where you're gonna be able to find it. Or if you have a meeting coming up, this is where your reminders, reminders will be, excuse me. So that is pretty much it with the view tab and customize it a little bit farther, farther, excuse me. So let's move on to the next video. All right, so the next thing we're gonna work with in Outlook Calendar is searching items in your calendar. So to get to the search bar, you're gonna go to the top right hand corner just above your calendar, right up here and click in the search, uh, the search box, excuse me. Um, so once you do that, you can see the search tab comes up and right now I'm on the current folder, so that just means I'm only gonna be searching in the current folder that I've selected. So I ask that you guys be careful when you do this because if you are looking for an item that is not in the current folder that you're clicked on, it can be kind of confusing, so make sure you're clicked on all calendar items if you're not sure where that appointment or meeting uh, or email is located. So from there, I'm just gonna stay in the current folder, and then you can also refine your search even farther. So organizer, I can see who's setting up the appointment or meeting if that's what I'm searching for, who sent the email. The subject line, uh, if the meeting or appointment has attachments, if it's categorized uh, as a certain field, if they've responded to the request or not, and more options. So if you click this, you can see you can go even further in depth. So if you knew what the body message says, uh, you can click on body and search it even farther. So right now we'll just go ahead and start to type in advertising. And then you can see that it's recognizing that I have an advertising walkthrough. Uh, it occurs every Monday at 9 to 10.30 a.m. Um, there's another cool thing that you can do in the search bar here. So if I finish out typing advertising, 
Um, you can use a couple words here to help you out even further, which are and, or, or not. So if you type them in, they have to be capitalized. So if you're looking for advertising and a certain word, advertising and content or content, um, or if you're looking for something that it does not include, so advertising and not content. So you, you're just refining that search even farther. So I'll give you guys an example here. So I'll search advertising or, once again, make sure it's capital, um, and then content. So you can see from there, I get my two um, calendar selections up that had the word advertising and con or content in it, excuse me. Um, so that's just a, a better way to refine your search if you're looking for more than one thing or trying to downsize your search. Okay, so that's it for the search tool in Outlook Calendar, so we're going to move on. Alright, so in this video we're going to go over how to email your calendar to someone else. So it's pretty basic to start off. Um, you click to the Home tab and then in the Share selection you can click Email Calendar. So I'll go ahead and click on that and then you'll have a window that gets brought up here. Um, so you can see that email is in the background, but first you have to select what you want to send. So I can pick what calendars I want to send, if it's just very specific ones or it's my whole calendar. So I'm just going to send them this Outlook training one, um, and then you can select date ranges. So say if you only want them to see it for the day, the next seven days, the whole month. Um, but I'll say whole calendar for now. And then the details, um, if they can only see your availability, they can see the limited details, which is the subjects and um, calendar items. Uh, or the full details, which they'll be able to see everything that's involved with those appointments and meetings. So let's just go limited details, and then you can also go to advanced um, and include details of certain um, items in your calendar, um, and then also the email layout. So right now, we'll just select how it is, and then click OK. You can see right here that it brings up uh, an option that I'm only going to send it for those seven days moving forward. Uh, and then you pick who you want it to be sent to. So I'll just send it to my coworker, Louise. Uh, and then once you've done that, you can click send and that's all. And they should be able to access your calendar for the next seven days. So that's how you email calendars to coworkers or anyone outside. So let's move on in the next video. All right, in this video, we're gonna go over how to print your calendar. So if you like having it in front of you, and being able to write on it, this can be very helpful for you. So to start off, click on what calendar you want. We're gonna stay in this Outlook calendar that we have here and then click the file option. And then from here, there is the print on the left-hand side, so click print. Uh, and then from here, you can see that you get the whole monthly layout. Uh, you can change it to however you like and however you wanna print it. Say if you want the weekly agenda style or if you want the weekly calendar style. Um, then once again, just like anything else, you select the style you want and then you click print and that is going to send it to your local printer and then you'll be able to write on that uh, if that's the way you like to work with your calendars. All right, so in this video, we're just gonna go over how to work with shared calendars, open them, how to view them. So to start off, you're gonna go over to the bottom left-hand corner and you can see where it says My Calendars and I'm currently in the Outlook training one that I have checked off. You can also expand this to make it a little bit bigger because mine's smaller, so I'm gonna blow it up a little bit so you can see. Um, you'll have this tab in Shared Calendars once a, once a calendar is shared with you by another person, so if they email it to you. Um, so to view that, all you have to do is simply click on the one. I only have schedule here, so I'll go ahead and click the checkbox. And you can see now that you have a side-by-side -side calendar view, and you can match up days and go through um, the other calendar that has been shared with you. You can also arrange it just like your own calendar. You can make it the week, the work week, and the day. Uh, we'll go back to month. And then if you're done viewing that calendar, calendar, excuse me, you just check it again and it'll go away back to just your setup. If you want to delete a calendar, right click on the shared calendar that you want to get rid of and it'll bring up a couple options. You can rename it um, and then if you want to delete it as well. So I want to keep that because that's important to me, but we'll move on to the next video. All right, in this video we'll go over how to create calendar groups and working with those. So to do that, it's very simple. Start off in the Home tab and then under the Manage Calendar section here, you can go to the Calendar Groups tab and then click on that. And then if you want to create a new calendar group or save uh, as a new calendar, calendar group if you're working with a couple shared calendars that you have up. But right now we're gonna go with Create New Calendar Group. So once that's selected, you're gonna have to name what you want the group to be set as. So we'll just go ahead and name this as Marketing. And then once you press OK, you're going to get an options of who you want to be in that group. 
So I'm just going to add a couple people from my team here. I'll we'll have Louise um, and then Stephanie. So once those are added in there, you can click OK. And then now you see you have um, a tab along with your shared calendar there that has those calendars under that calendar group. So you can always go there to find those people's calendars and view them side by side with your current calendar as well. So that's just working with the calendar group. Also, if you don't want to have those anymore, right click once again. Um, you can add calendars to it or delete it, rename it, whatever you want to do. Move it up in your important list or move it down. Um, so we'll move on to the next video now. In this section, we're going to go over working with the meetings and appointments tab. So to start off, we'll go ahead and click on a new meeting here, which will open up a new screen for you. So to start off, you have to pick a attendee that you want to send this meeting request to. So let's just go ahead and type in Ron here. Um, let's give it a subject line. We'll just call it marketing again. As you guys can see, I have a bias. Um, and then location, we have a couple rooms saved in ours. So I'll go ahead and just select our office. Uh, and then from there, you can pick your start time and end time. So let's make it for eight o'clock tomorrow. One thing I do want to point out on the right hand side is when it's a good time to book a meeting. This can be very helpful when you're working with a few attendees that are often pretty busy. You can see that there's conflicts in each. Um, so we just have to work out the time and check calendars and see what's right for them. And then from there, we can head on up to this top bar and see what else we can do with this. So you can request it as a Skype meeting. Um, you can cancel the invitation if it's already sent out. Uh, you can check names if you're sending this meeting request to someone you're not sure about. It'll make sure that their email is correct. Response options, which will give you um, the attendee a request to respond or allow new time proposals if, they, if, that, if that doesn't work for their calendar. You can also pick how it's going to show on their calendar, which is busy, working elsewhere, free, tentative, out of office. Um, so you can set that. If this is going to be a recurring meeting, if you're, it's a marketing meeting, uh, every Wednesday and you want it to recur weekly you can click on this and set it up on what days it's going to be at what times uh, you can categorize it uh, you can see we have a couple categories here design marketing and marketing design I'll go ahead and mark this as marketing now so once Ron will open that he can see that this is the color red and that means a marketing meeting you can also put it as high importance low importance or private um, from there we can go to the insert tab and work with um, the text box, it, box in here, excuse me. You can attach files, business cards, signatures. You can add tables, some icons and shapes. This is just um, the field to let people know what's going on in the meeting, usually placed for an agenda. Um, you can add text box, word out, symbol. Formatting the text, just like the normal home tab in Word, works the same way. You can select your fonts. You can bold it, italicize it, add headings, change the color, highlight different things and then review once again, uh, same thing as word, spelling and grammar. Uh, you can look at your word, word count, excuse me, translate. Um, so that's really it for the meeting side of things.